I'm no longer a Tesla owner, John. Oh, you sold it. I was going to ask because I was looking at cars all day today. Did you did you get what you wanted for it? Yeah, yeah, I did. I did. I I got a pretty pretty solid deal, and the best part was it was just easy. I was able to sell it to a dealership who offered me more than the other dealerships by, you know, some up to it was like twelve grand more than some of the other dealerships. Um, so it was easy. Signed a couple of papers. I was out of there in 30 minutes with a big old check. And then I uh, also purchased like an old, uh, older uh, 2017. So not that old years wise, but it has 160,000 miles on it. Uh, a Nissan Frontier. So that thing is a tank. And I just took it off roading all weekend to test out some hunting spots, like to see right. do some scouting. And I was in some of the gnarliest situations I've ever been in a vehicle. Like, like probably a dozen times, like super sketchy stuff where I'm like having to get out to make sure I don't like rock crawl off a cliff and like making sure I don't poke a hole in the engine. And uh, it handled it like a champ. So I'm in love already with my new truck. Jeez, I love how you go like the total polar opposite of the Tesla. You know, it's you're just like, let's the just get opposite. the biggest truck I can get. <laughs> I put it on, uh, I posted it on Reddit. Um, like there's a neat time, there's a, there's a Reddit for everything. Right. Um, and cause I was, I was, you know, kind of checking in on the engine. Like what are some, mis what are some common like things I need to fix to make sure it lasts a really long time. And I made this video and I said, uh, traded in my Tesla model Y performance, uh, to get this bad boy, you know, how can I make it run to 300,000 miles? And people were just like, did you lose your job? Like what's going on, dude? Like <laughs> why? And you know, and so many people are just like, that was a terrible idea. And I'm just like, I mean, yeah, the Tesla was super expensive. I mean, I could afford it, but that just because you can afford something doesn't mean that you should uh, own it. Uh, what really sealed the deal was last week. Um, I freaking love the car. I mean, it's the best vehicle I've ever driven. My favorite of all time. However, uh, I couldn't get to a hunting spot a couple of weeks ago to scout. And I was like, well, this is stupid. Why do I own this vehicle if I can't do what I need to do with it? Uh, similar to your thing with shoes. Like you don't want to have to like your shoes shouldn't be the reason you can't do something. Well, the car shouldn't be the reason I can't do something. So there was that. And then, um, and then I was on the phone with my insurance company and they told me what my six month premium was to insure the thing. And I was just like, I didn't know I was paying that much to insure this. Like, holy crap. <laughs> so I was just like, yep, that seals the deal. I'm getting a truck and nice. basically bought a relatively inexpensive truck because I just feel like the markets for vehicles right now is just so high. So I was like, let me sell high and then I'll buy something that is, you know, still priced too high, but at least it's not priced $10,000 above market. It's only maybe a grand or two. And then I can pocket the rest of those savings so is, and is then the reddit uh or is the subreddit for cars as bad as the subreddit for crossfit the crossfit one is painful i can barely spend a minute in there without just losing my mind <laughs> um it all depends on which subreddit like this is specifically for the nissan frontier um so it's not not that bad but uh i'm sure there's like general ones that are like reddit you know backslash cars and i'm sure that's a disaster dude I, I hate reddit so much it's just full <laughs> of anonymous assholes that's all it is i've that's met some i've met some really really good people in fact what's crazy is one of the guys uh one of the guys who's like giving me tips i'm like hey here's my new car you know i traded in a model y what are some simple things i should do to make it last a really long time he commented and he's like hey like you know if you're hunting you know here are a couple modifications put in a small lift you know get some off-road tires and then you'll be good to go it'll get over anything and if you're hunting in, you know, in Colorado, in this one particular area, hit me up. And I was just like, that's exactly the area I'm hunting in. And he, he's like, I moved back East and he's been chatting me, giving me some pointers on some areas. So, so I read it, read it does have some good, good apples. All right. Well, I'm going to take your word for it. Every time I go in there, I just get mad and then I don't, don't go back on for a few months. Then I'm like, oh, maybe it's gotten better. And I go back on and it's not gotten better. And it's just, it's terrible. And, and the lot. wad prep party. Uh, I guess two years ago at Madison, the Wad Prep party was also the CrossFit Reddit party. I've just decided to invite all of the Reddit people. And we had some, <laughs> there were some interesting individuals that came out of the woodwork where I'm like, you're from Reddit, aren't you? Um, it was very interesting. Uh, but there was a lot of really good people there as well. well there you go. Well, we got some comments coming in. And just because I want you to do it, can you bust out your Australian accent for this guy and give him a shout out? Hi, and Jarvis from Australia here. How about a shout out? <laughs>
That was I pretty good. So I don't always get it, but that one was pretty good. <laughs> that was so good. Uh, I don't know why I'm just um, just amused. Like I'm a 12 year old boy every time you bust out an Australian accent, but it's the best. <laughs> All right, so tonight we are talking about how to not do dumb things uh, at CrossFit or uh, how to prohibit them. And I've done plenty, and I continue to do I joked when you text me and said, hey, let's talk about this. I'm like, I'm still doing dumb shit, like every weekend. But it's probably a good idea to give people some some good advice. So we'll do our best to do that. Yeah, yeah. Well, as people are as people are making fun of my perfect Australian accent in the commentary, um, yeah, I am ready. I have a, a few prepared, uh, just like the last podcast. I really, really loved the last podcast. We got a lot of good feedback on it. I thought it was very well organized, and I had a list, and I was ready. So when you have a list again, list. yeah, man, I'm dialed in. I, I'm dying to see how many things on your list. I'm still doing. So this is good. Let's do it. Give me number one on your list. I think I have a feeling. You do all of these. Do you? Um, okay. Uh, you're probably right. So some of these are, are there's like physical acts, but then there's also, I think what ended up happening as I was making this list is a few of them turned into, this is more like mindset, like kind of like a mindset right. to CrossFit. And we've touched on a lot, a lot of them. So um, uh, I'll just, let's start with this one. So there's an, are no particular order, but I'm going to start with this one is I need to get stronger right? That, that's the thing preventing me from hitting high numbers in all of the different lifts and being good at gymnastics is I just need to get stronger. When okay. in fact, I think for a large majority of people, um, no, you need more technique work. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, they don't have the technique to utilize the strength they already have. There are some people who obviously need to get stronger. And getting stronger is always a good goal, but I've seen so many athletes, especially the younger males uh, or like, you know, like females that have like an athletic background that are just like, I got to get stronger. That's the key here. I'm going to hit more PRs if I just get freaking stronger. And it's like, no, you need to learn how to properly snatch the barbell to get a better snatch. It, the analogy yeah, that I use. Are you talking about the barbell only or is this just in general strength? Um, I would say where I see this, this mistake, where I see this dumb mistake is mostly with barbell movements is like, okay. they think they need to get more raw strength. Like, Oh, they're like, I need to get, I need to deadlift more. I need to squat more. I need to press more. That's, what's going to get me a big snatch. And the, the way I, I, you know, we always said how I need to do an analogy every, um, every episode. Well, here it comes, everyone. Here's here, the bench. Here we go. Oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> Let me get ready. All right. All right, bring it. So, imagine you had a vehicle, this vehicle or automobile, as my late grandfather would say. Let's say you have an automobile and the automobile has a massive engine in it. Let's use, I don't know, we'll use some, we'll, we'll call it a, a Ferrari 458 Italia. It has the, a Ferrari engine in it. OK, right. it has an engine that can put out a ton of power, but you have that engine um, on on a vehicle that can't handle it. So let's say you put that engine in a Honda Civic. Yeah, you're going to be able to do a lot of stuff with it, but chances are you're not going to be very good at racing that car. The car is going to make a lot of mistakes. Things are going to fall apart. It's just going to go off the rails. So you have a ton of power, but you don't necessarily have the body, the frame, the tires the equipment to utilize that power. Well, I would say the equipment and the body and the frame, those that's the technique. And then the engine on the inside, that's just the raw strength and the raw power. So a lot of people think that they need to just soup up their engine. Uh, and metaphorically speaking, I don't mean like the CrossFit engine. I mean like their, their power yeah. engine. They're like, let's get a bigger engine when it's really like, no, you just need to like have like nicer brake pads and, and nicer tires. <laughs> and like you need to, you need to have the complete package. So oftentimes, again, to wrap things up is the mindset, the mistake is I need to get stronger always. And they focus on strength instead of working on their technique. I think focusing on strength and technique is important at the same time. But if you ignore technique work and just say, ah, oh, just let me get, let me add some weight to the bar. Like, let me, let me just try to lift this. Then you're really, really missing a crucial component of actually being a good crosser. And I used to be I was this to a T like I could, as soon as I could snatch over 200 pounds, 
I, it did not matter how, what it looked like. I literally remember bouncing the barbell off my <laughs> forehead once to hit a 205 pound snatch in class. Counts in CrossFit. Just because I could. <laughs> and, and because 195 right. just wasn't good enough for the whiteboard. And it's just like, that's so ridiculous. Like me trying to hit that over 200 snatch by any means necessary thwarted my overall progress because I wasn't focusing on technique. So. I think people need to focus on relative strength. And what I mean by that is like, it's easy to get lured into this um, chase of heavy weights. And you like what I see often in gyms, you'll see somebody doing a heavy squat. Well, the, you know, the analogy mass moves mass has always held up. And so you can have a guy out there that weighs 250 and he's going to be squatting 400 pounds. And while it's an impressive amount of weight, he's got a lot of mass behind him and that helps. A guy my size squatting 400 pounds would be a hell of a lot more impressive, right? But mm -hmm. to try to get there, like my relative strength would have to be significantly more than his. If that makes mm -hmm. sense. So like I, I think of like um, Haley Adams is a great example of a CrossFitter that has relative strength. Like every CrossFit games, and I say this to love for, for her because she's really a sweetheart. But it seems like every games, there's one heavy lift where she's caught on camera just sitting there staring at the barbell, right? Because she's just not what she's known for. But when she gets into a weight that's relative for her, she can move a heavy barbell for reps as well as anyone, just not mm -hmm. a really heavy barbell, if that makes sense. Right. Yep. So like, you know, let's say that, I don't know, it would be considered like a moderate weight for a games, a female games athlete, but we'll call it like 125. Right. She can move 125 all day long. You move it up to 200 and she's going to be sitting there staring at it. You're talking about a snatch or, or, yeah whatever. Whatever. whatever yeah i guess i'm just you know i guess i'm just you know saying that you know when you're focusing on strength it's easy early on to go i gotta go heavy i gotta go heavy I gotta go heavy without really taking into account your body type what your goals are where you want to be to your point of you know having an engine that's too big for the frame you know you you could start lifting heavy and heavier heavier and if your technique's off all of a sudden you're at major risk for injury you know like there's just so many bad things that can happen. So for me, it's always been relative strength, you know, like what are other people, my size, my age, what are they lifting? Mm -hmm. I use, um, uh, we're on Wattify at the gym, but beyond the whiteboard, uh, does a really nice job of this. So being able to show you, um, you know, for different Metcons, for instance, where you should be from a percentile standpoint and give you kind of stepping stones to getting That's there. Cool. You know, cool. so, um, for me, it's always relative strength, but I think you're spot on. That's, uh, that's an easy one to do dumb stuff early on. Yeah. Like, oh uh, yeah. Like bouncing barbells off your, off your forehead or, <laughs> I mean, this, the, the, the cleans that I used to do to, and I'd get away with because accounts in CrossFit is just, oh, horrendous. Um, all right, John, you're up. Oh, let's, I have to do one. I mean, uh, or I can just riff on mine. I got four or four here. Yeah, yeah, let's do yours. I mean, right. I can get some, but let's do yours. Here's another one. All right. This one's a personal okay. pet peeve of mine. And I used to do it all the time. I actually specifically remember posting a Facebook status update that I later worried sounded kind of, I guess, homosexual because all my friends were making fun of me at the time. And then I removed it. Nothing against homosexuals. It just wasn't what I was going for. And that was if... If your knees are bloody, you're doing it right. I specifically remember. All right. First of all, I have a lot of gay friends and I don't, I have no idea why you think they would have bloody knees, but we can do that off. So all my friends, like my friends were sort of like, well, what were you doing to your knees, Ben? And I just specifically remember that I like, I need to actually pull this up. It's on Facebook somewhere. And this thread is just like all of my friends just, just making fun of me. There are times I hate that this show's live. This is and I'm And, and. And what I what I'm trying to say here is wearing a wearing blood as a badge of honor. And that's what I used to do. It's like the old school CrossFit is like, oh, yeah, hands are ripped. Like, hell, yeah, you have blood on your shins and on your knees from deadlifting improperly. Like, woo. All right. And I just remember, like, I would come home with these like battle wounds, just the horrific, bloody battle wounds. And obviously I was so proud about it. I would like post Facebook status updates to let people know that I had blood all over myself from, from CrossFit. And I just think that is, it's, it's a ridiculous notion and it should no longer be worn as a badge of honor because 
all it does is prevent you from exercising more. So. Bro, or in the early days, back when CrossFit was all about, you know, how long does it take to make you puke? We used to do these workouts outside and we had this uh, coach, Regina, I think I've talked about her before. She was a real piece of work. And I'd say that with love. If she were on this show, I would call her a piece of work to her face. Yeah, yeah. And, That's the key. Um, when you make fun of someone, you just have to be able to, oh, you have to be able to say it to their face. That's oh, it's not even making fun. She's a piece of work. <laughs> it's just, just a fact. And uh, she would make us do overhead weighted lunges with like 45 pound plates outside on the concrete. Right. Oh. And, and these are the days before like, you know, oh. knee sleeves were a big part of the CrossFit mm -hmm. ecosphere, you know, like the rogue fitness didn't exist or at least, you know, for us to buy stuff from it was again time. faster. Yeah, it absolutely was. And, and to your point, we'd come home with bloody knees and you're all scraped up and just beat telling back. I was thinking about it this week because we were doing weighted lunges in the gym and I didn't wear knee sleeves. And I said, I made kind of a similar joke, although I think my joke was, man, my knees are all red. I hope somebody sees this because I'm kind of a loser lately. <laughs> you know, I'm kind of proud of my red knees. Um, but they were beat up. And I was like, I wish I'd worn knee sleeves. You know, and that's something you learn over the years of like, what movements do you need to wear protective gear? Or when do you just need to go, you know what? I don't have it with me. I'm not going right. to do it. I'm going to scale. I'm going to do something different. Like sure. rope, rope climbs are one. I often have to do something different because I, my, you know, my form's kind of weird and I always scrape the front of my shin with the rope, you know, and it gets mm -hmm. all gross. And so I'm like pulling down knee sleeve, oh. protected or pulling up socks and such that raw fun. skin just all up on the rope. Mm. Oh, it's so bad. It is so yeah. bad. So yeah. But like, I mean, I know you remember just like back in the day, it was just like this badge of honor, this like, you know, no grit, no blood, no glory kind of thing, which I respected in a way, but I, 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 I would say like, it's a kind of almost like an immature CrossFitter. If you are ripping your hands and you're like, Oh yeah, like this is so badass," and like bragging about it. Cause if I like, if I rip my hands or, and an experienced CrossFitter, I know rips their hands anywhere other than like in a competition, it's like, Oh man, I made a major mistake there. Like that mm -hmm. was an, that was a dumb move because that's actually going to affect my training for the next week, two weeks. Um, and that's just a step in the wrong direction. Yeah, I did it Sunday and I had that exact same thought. It was right on my pinky, just, you know, a little rub. And oh, I was doing pinky I, rub. I know, I was doing snatches and uh, the workout had 100 snatches and partner workouts. So 50 each, 95 pounds, power snatches. And we we're mm -hmm. doing sets of fives. And it was really kind of hot and humid in the gym. I got about halfway through and I felt it ripping. And in my mind, I like immediately thought, man, like I always tape my thumbs and my pinkies when I'm doing high rep snatches. And it just like, I just spaced it out before the workout started. Just a real rookie move, you know, because nice. that same thing, like I don't want to have a week where I, you know, I've got big rips on my hands. Fortunately, that was the only thing I got, but man, mm. it's annoying. It's nope. annoying. That's a good one. Yeah. No rips. All right. What else? What else is on your list? Um, so this one is uh, an obvious one that you struggle with. Uh, I need more gear. That's definitely what I'm missing. Uh, I, I remember when I was a young CrossFitter back in the back when I was a wee lad, <laughs> I would buy every, I still have it like back in the back here. Um, I have like a storage bin and I have all the crap that I used to carry to the gym every single day because, well, what if this is programmed? I have this set of knee sleeves and I have this set of knee sleeves if it's pistols and i have this set of olympic weightlifting shoes if it's this kind of like i had a piece of gear for every single potential iteration <laughs> of every workout like it was crazy because i always felt that that was what was preventing me from making progress was like oh can't do this or oh this feels weird like ah, i need to i need a belt up or i need some knee sleeves or i need knee sleeves and a belt and a this and that and wrist wraps and yada 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 and then honestly, the thing that got me out of it and the thing that started really making me go, whoa, was watching Rich Froning and Ben Smith win the Mid-Atlantic Regional and, you know, the, the cross, CrossFit Games and watching those guys do it. And all they were doing was wearing Reebok Nano shoes. That's it. Maybe a belt for a uh, one rep max lift of some sort, but that's it. That's it. It's all they would wear. And once I saw that, I was like, you know what? Maybe I don't need all this stuff. Yep. So uh, gear 
like missing gear is the answer or missing gear is the missing piece is mistake number three that I want to talk about. Well, dude, I have a basket of gear in my basement. I was, I was doing a workout in my basement today because I didn't have time to get to the gym and I was doing the workout that was prescribed and had, um, uh, kettlebell snatches in it. And I don't do a lot of kettlebell snatches, but I've done them enough to know, uh, if you don't punch them out just right, you get that kettlebell hits you right on the back of your wrist and it hurts like hell. And I haven't yep. done them in a while. So I'm like, I'm pretty sure I'm, my form's not going to be spectacular on these. So I'm going to wear wrist wraps. I had to go hunting for those things. Cause I have not worn wrist wraps proudly in like three years. Like I just yeah. gave at some point, I just gave them up. Cause same thing. I, I actually made a, a meme about rich and he messaged me and, and, and said, Hey, I don't wear wrist wraps, <laughs> you know, as a joke. And, um, and I was like, Holy shit. Like, one of the fittest people on the planet, five, you know, four time fittest man on earth, or however many times he won, um, doesn't wear wrist straps. Like, why the heck is yeah. my old ass wearing them? So I put them away, but I wore them today because I didn't want to bust the, you know, the outside of my wrist. So I think they have a place to some degree, um, but I think they're limited. Mm. And like now, my gym bag is literally a belt if we're deadlifting or maybe cleaning heavy. Um, Lifting shoes for the occasional like strict lift if I need them and some chalk and a jump rope. That's it. Nothing else in my bag. Yep. And, and I, for me, that's all I need. Like, that's it. Like, yeah, you know, and I, and it, honestly, um, the lifters are just for convenience. Yeah. Like, like I can't even, I can't even tell you the last time I wore lifters. It's crazy. Yeah. I, um, I don't wear them that often. And I only, somebody, Lance asking the question if I belted up this morning. I did. We were deadlifting today. And I do wear a belt for deadlifts, mm -hmm. particularly when they get, you know, if, I, if I'm if i up over 75, 80% of my one rep max, then I'm wearing a belt almost always, mm -hmm. which I was today. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I like, I don't know. I just feel like that money can be better spent on shoes. <laughs> That's just my <laughs> feeling, you know, buy all the shoes you want. Um, now the reason you have a shoe addiction is, is not from a, Oh, this is the missing piece in my performance. You just, you just like shoes, right? Um, a little of both. I do think there's, um, I've said for a long time when it comes to shoes, the secret to a great CrossFit shoe is the one you don't think about. Mm -hmm. And so if, if the shoes are getting in your way in a workout, you have the wrong ones on. And, it, and I do think there are some shoes that are better than others for certain things. So if a workout has a lot of running in it, I have a pair of shoes for those, you know, like mm -hmm. if you want to be comfortable in a run and like the la there's last thing I want to do is sound like a Clydesdale out running around the gym and some flat bottomed CrossFit shoes. Yeah. But when you also have, you know, snatches and jumping and, burpees and wall walks and all the other craziness that we do, you got to take into account some of those other things, you know? And so I have arguably way too many shoes, but I have like probably two pairs that I gravitate to. Sure. You know? So, I mean, yeah. I think you absolutely can get away with one to two pairs as long as it's something you're really comfortable in. Mm -hmm. um, or you can own 13 or 14 pairs like I do because you also own them. And then you have one for every color of your outfit. Yeah, well, look, you got to be matchy-matchy, dude. It's important. Um, yeah, and inside my – it's so interesting that as I matured as a CrossFitter, my gear bag got smaller and smaller and smaller. But the gear bag that sits at the gym I think only has a couple of elements in it, and one is a bag of chalk because it's not communal chalk, which is sad. Um, so a bag of chalk weightlifting belt, knee sleeves. I think I have a pair of weightlifters. I haven't used them in who knows how long. And then a jump rope. Th oh, and hand grips. Hand grips are actually a new one. I didn't used to wear those, but now I'm in love with the E26 grip. Um, but that's it. That's like my whole thing. And actually things that I use on a weekly basis would be hand grips and a jump rope. I almost never wear a belt. I almost never... Um, almost never were weightlifters. Um, and if there's anything else in the bag, I've obviously forgotten about it cause I don't use it very much. So yep. that's really it. I think when it comes to gear, like buying gear like this, you really have to ask is the, is the problem you, or do you really need the gear? Like, cause there are some people that need knee sleeves. Sure. They I do. mean, they, they, you they know. definitely make the, make the knees feel better for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, there are some people that are going to need that extra support. Like, you know, some of that's a question for your coach or your doctor. I just remember early on, um, 
trying to solve all these problems that I was having at CrossFit. And, you know, there wasn't a source to go. I didn't have a rogue fitness or, or anyone else for that matter to give me tips. And so like hand reps were the first thing that happened. Somebody said that in the comments, you know, they were just told you it's something you got to get used to was Adam. Uh, so the rips are real. I used to cheer all the time. I was told something I have to get used to. That's what I was told too. Is that, Hey, you're ripping your hands. Get used to it. Welcome to CrossFit. They should so have I'm watched the wad prep video. We have two videos for this <laughs> that I think are the best videos on the whole freaking internet on, uh, how to hand care for CrossFit. If you look it up on YouTube, those two videos are amazing. Well, funny enough, I, at the time, this would have been 20, probably 13, 2012, 2013. I just started, um, I was running a blog at the time and I went out and learned how to make my own grips. And it was like one of the most viewed and searched blogs I'd ever done. Cause everyone that was crossfitting was trying to figure out how to not rip, you know? Yep. And so I think there, there is a point for some people where you have to decide, are you going to be a grips person or a non grips person? You know, and, and that's a, it's a personal choice. <laughs> I mean, it really yeah, is, I was you know? a non-grip person for a very long time and didn't have any issues with hand rips really. Uh, and then uh, the E26 grips came around and I fell in love and then it was love happily ever after. I do think though, for the other things like belts are a good example of one that um, you, you need to get a stronger core. Like you got to, sure, yeah, they can, they can know. definitely become a really big crutch. All this gear, including grips, um, they can become a very, very big crutch, uh, knee sleeves included. Um, I think the weightlifting shoes are a big one because it helps with that ankle flexibility yeah. and, you know, just puts you in a better position for the squat and they can really become a crutch. So if you, if there's a piece of gear that you are like, Oh, I got to have this or else I can't train, then it's probably a crutch. Same, even with jump ropes. Like if you're someone that can only do double unders with your jump rope and a barometric pressure of 38 and like, you know, a wa waxing crescent moon or something like if you have to have the stars aligned just to get um, a set of 50 unbroken double unders, you don't know double unders, right? I could pick up your rope, John, and knock out 50 unbroken guaranteed, right? And that's, that's the sign of like true mastery is being able to use any piece of gear or equipment and being okay with it. I'm not sure I could do that. And I'm pretty good at double unders. So maybe I need to take your course because I'm you sure you take my course. Then, if I gave you my jump rope <laughs> now, granted my, my rope would be very short, but you should be able to accommodate for that. Your rope would be too long for me. I could accommodate yeah. for that. Like I think true mastery, especially with, with the jump rope, if you only have one rope that is one weight with one speed and one length, and that's the only way that you can do double unders, then it's, I don't think you know them as oh. well as you wish you did. I'll, uh, I'll pull off one of my shoelaces and practice so I can use your rope. It'll be great. <laughs> a high hey, top. I, did a, man, a high I, top. I shot a, um, while Shona was here or no, this was after she left. But, uh, th this last week I shot a video on me teaching myself double under crossovers for the first time. We just like clicked record and I was like, all right guys, I've never tried it in my entire life. Let's try it. And I was tripping all, it took me way longer than I thought, but I was able to get a couple. So. Uh, Dave Newman's going to come on the show while you're out hunting, by the way. And Perfect. You know, we're, we're going to talk about double under uh, crossovers. Be great. Yeah, I wish I was there because I, I want to learn them. I, I <laughs> made a video about it and I, I think I got some really good tips on there because I was able to start getting them, you know, getting them really consistently. Um, but yeah, that's that's exciting. I can't wait to see see what he has to say. All right. Next thing on your list. What else is on your list? All right. Next. This is the last one I have written down and I know there's a lot more um, that I can definitely come up with, but this is a big one. Um, and this, this is all mistakes that I personally made. I've stopped making progress. I need to start competitor programming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've heard that so many times. Oh, dude. I just so many times I cannot. I was the, I was literally the stereotypical college age bro who, as soon as I heard that there was such thing as competitor programming, I was like, I need that rather than going to class because I thought that more was more. I thought that me coming in on my own and training with my bros and doing this at the time it was outlaw way, which was freaking three hours long right. and ridiculous. Um, I thought that that was the key to success. Yes, working out with my friends and us pushing each other probably did have a positive benefit. But if I was able to just do that within the confines of class with a coach's eye watching me and trusted the process of true class programming or 
or like we mentioned on the last call, like a program that has like a, a full season, that would have been better. I, as soon as I saw, as soon as I stopped making a PR every single day, I was like, well, must be the programming. I must need to switch. And I just, it's, that wasn't the right call. I, I didn't need to go competitor programming right away because I couldn't even do everything yet. So that was, I think, a, a huge thing that runs rampant in CrossFit is for a lot of people with competitive aspirations, or if they think very highly of themselves athletically, they're like, I mean, I need a competitor program, obviously. Um, and that is not the right move. More is not necessarily better in that case. I completely agree. I can't tell you how many people I've seen, I've seen that have done that. They, they get in or they're not making, it usually isn't that they're not making progress. They think they're not making fast enough progress. Right, right, right. It's because they haven't PR'd in a week. And they're like, yeah. ah, I've plateaued. <laughs> yeah. And then they're, I, I've joked forever that somebody should make a protein shake with an antidepressant in it for CrossFitters because <laughs> only, only CrossFitters can go out and like, you know, do Fran and miss their PR by like two seconds and it ruins their week. You yeah, know, yeah. it's like, it's so ridiculous. It's like, come on, these are just, they're timed workouts. They're not, mm. it's not, a, the, you know, the definition of your life here. Um, I think a big one, a big mistake for a lot of CrossFitters early on is they don't have a plan, you know, or maybe even a goal, like, you know, short-term goals. But, yep. I, you know, for me, it's, um, you know, in the early days, back when I was a kid, um, you know, we didn't get the workouts until, you know, the morning we walked in the door. So it was truly kind of unknown and unknowable in those days. Now mm -hmm. most gyms, like my gym gives you your entire week in advance. And so I can go in with a plan. I can look at the workout and get a sense of what I'm doing. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't let my personal plan supersede what the coach wants me to do. I still go to the whiteboard and I'll listen to the instruction and ask questions. And if they tell me to do something different than I had planned, then I'm going to do that. But I also like to look at the workout and, and try to formulate, all right, like, how do I want to break this up? What I want it to look like? What should my time be? And compare it to data that I've saved from other workouts. I'm not spending an exorbitant amount of time doing this, but I think you need to go in with a plan, a sense of what you want to accomplish. And fundamentally, I think that's where people fail is they just, you know, they go in, do as they're told, they don't track it. They don't even really think back to it. And then you're not really learning. Like it's kind of the point of like doing these workouts is you should learn from it and then progressively get better. So an example would be as if let's call it a relatively simple workout. Um, I don't know, let's say Annie, right? 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, double unders and setups, right? Pretty straightforward, relatively short workout for most people. The very first time I did that, it was single unders because I couldn't do dubs. And the sit-ups took me forever, right? But I tried- And you all... probably got monkey butt. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely got monkey butt, it was great. And, uh, you know, and so that, but then I tracked it and I had that time. And then once I got double unders, now I've got another time. And I'm, and I'm tracking, where did I take breaks? How many times did I trip? You know, and, and as I'm progressively getting better, I'm starting to realize where I'm making changes to make it more efficient until I am finally at the point where now I would go into it and just do it all unbroken, you know, but early on I couldn't, I would have to go, all right, in the round of 50, I'm going to do five sets of 10, you know? And then the next time I do it, instead of five sets of 10, maybe I'll do two sets of 25 and I keep testing it until I've, gotten to what is the you know you would hope the required stimulus of doing it as fast as you can unbroken and you know kind of sub six and a half minutes you know give or take um so i don't know i just think having a plan critically important to making progress yep yeah i agree with that i love having like having clear goals and some sort of way to reach them uh it's one of the best books that i ever read a long long time ago um I think if it's like seven strategies for wealth and happiness by Jim Rohn or something like that, like super old school, like self-development, self-help book. But he just talks about, I mean, he makes a very clear argument of like, if you have a goal of where you want to be in, let's say five years, then you have to ask yourself, where do I need to be in three years to be on track to meeting my five-year goal? Okay. In one year, where do I need to be to be on track to meet my three-year goal to meet my five? And basically do you just backtrack yeah. your end goal all the way to the now. And then that helps you take bite-sized action um, towards those goals. A lot of people will just throw up a huge goal like, oh yeah, I want to compete in the games. And it's like, okay, 
well, where are you now? How far away from you, you know, to getting there? And then where are the, where are the checkpoints along the way that you need to be pursuing in order to get there? And if you don't know how to do that, then, you know, working with a coach or, you know, work, work with a coach at your gym, have a goal, you know, goal setting session with them or hop on a call with one of the wad prep coaches and do one-on-one coaching. And they'll help you set goals. You know, like there's, there's a lot of options out there, but I feel when it comes to setting goals, a lot of people are like, Oh yeah, you know, I know how to set a goal and they just come up with some random thing, but setting really clear goals with a specific timeline. Um, Dawn and I talked about that a bunch in, in the strong mind course that we made. Actually, it's about like having a very clear picture of where you want to go and why and how, and how long is it going to take for you to get there? Um, I think that that can't be understated. I think one of the other big mistakes people make, this would be my next point, is comparing yourself to others. Oh, that's like, a big one. Like early on, Dang, I think even got now. That, one. that was perfect. That's a perfect one. Well, I would say even now I make this mistake. It's funny. I was uh, I, like everybody else. Matt here, Matt ONH uh, said, you stalk everyone's notes in Wattify since he works out in the evenings. I do the same thing. I stalk everybody in Wattify and I have kind of a sense of who I stack up against and which workouts. And like, I made the, this mistake this week. I went into the gym. I looked at the, at the workout and like, I kind of know how to compare to people. And one of our coaches, James is a really fit dude. And we're, we compare and so he's younger than me, but we compare in some areas, other areas we don't. And he's good at gymnastics movements. And I'm looking at this workout and his notes say toes to bar were really hard. That should have been my clue that I shouldn't be comparing myself to him because he's really good at toes to bar. And I didn't take that cue and I got my ass kicked in this workout in the toes to bar section. Um, but where it's really like it hit me was uh, we were sitting around talking one day and, you know, I compare myself to people and I'm not going to name names, but I heard someone say, hey, coach, do you guys have you watched this athlete lately? And he's like, oh, yeah, that dude skips reps all the time. <laughs> and. And my ears went up because I compare oh my myself, God. because I compare myself against this person a lot, a lot. Like we have similar times pretty often, you know. Oh. And then I'm like that cheating him effort. Like I don't even know this guy. Yeah, <laughs> like, I don't know and him you're, at getting, all. you're getting you angry know? over something that's like that's absolutely ridiculous. Like you can't control his scores, and why do yeah. you care? You know. I, you no, know, I guess my point though is like I'm comparing my times against someone whose times I shouldn't be comparing it against. Right. Like you, you need to, you should only be comparing against your own data. Cause that's really the only person you can get better than. I think it's okay to find people in your age group. And that's why that opens such a cool thing. Like kind of figure out how you stack rank and, and you know, what's your relative fitness level. But, but if you keep comparing yourself to your buddy, you know, that's beating you by two seconds, every single workout, a, you're going to be depressed all the time. You're going to need that protein shake I was talking about. And, and secondly, you're not really going to make progress because you're busy chasing somebody else instead of trying to fix your own mistakes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And when, anytime that you give something outside of your control, the power to make you happy or unhappy, you know, you're destined for failure. Right. So like the fact that like, like I like the idea of using other people's scores as like motivation to get me all fired up. Oh my God, I'm so excited to, you know, kick butt and try to beat this person like that. There's a healthy bit of competitiveness there, but yeah, if you're like hinging your, like your sense of self-worth self-worth on someone else's score, like, Oh, John, you beat me by two seconds in Fran, like oh, failure. It's like, you're, you're really setting yourself up for failure because you're putting the control of your, of your, of your progress and of your happiness and of your like motivation in someone else's hands, which is just fundamentally ridiculous. Yeah. Like I'm trying to come away from workouts now. Like, you know, even these workouts this week have been really eye opening to me because I've had a couple where I feel like I've made mistakes like in my planning, but what I have not done is come away from the workouts, looking at my time going, Oh man, I'm, eighth on the leaderboard instead of fifth, or if I had not made this mistake, I would have been fourth. Like I've quit looking at placement and, and now I'm more thinking about, well, if I had done this different, would the outcome be different? And I'm logging that. So the next time I, that workout comes up again, I'm going to try the different way and see if I was right. And it doesn't mean I will be, but it's worth trying, you know, cause I, what I want to be able to localize is like in that toes to bar workout I was mentioning, it was kind of low key brutal, dude. It was, here's the workout. It was a good workout. 
hundred. It was a brutal. Chip, it was yeah. It was a chipper. You should do it. Uh, make sure you listen to this. Uh, your time would be great. Hundred and twenty double unders. Hundred step ups with a twenty four inch box. So not weighted, just good old fashioned step ups. Uh, Eighty sit ups. So just ab mat sit ups. Here's where it started to get hard. Uh, Sixty. Uh, 45 pound plate ground to overhead, uh, 40 toes to bar, 20 burpee box jumps. So you have that kind of 80, 60, 40 section. That's all midline. Mm -hmm. And that was my mistake. Like I'm really good at sit up. So I'm like, I'm going to do these unbroken and show them how fast I am. And I did, I did them real quick. I was the first one. done. With, yeah. I was the first one done with the sit ups. I was not the first one done with toes to bar, not even close. Like yeah. I'm literally sitting there watching people pass me and like, I can do fresh 25 to 30 toes to bar unbroken. I did five, <laughs> five, Ben, five. Yeah. And my core was like, what do you know? Stop. You must stop now. <laughs> I mean, I look at a workout like that and, and fives is probably a great strategy to go into it. But yeah, if like if all you can muster out for like your maximal set was five, yeah, you're pretty smoked. Well, you know, I've never done those ground overhead. And so like in hindsight, I should have broken up my setups and give myself a little break, like not destroy my core. And then when I got to those ground overheads, again, maybe smaller set, like I did six sets of 10 and I did them all real quick, very short mm -hmm. break. Like it wasn't much of a break in between at all. Like I was pushing it to get to the toes to bar thinking that's where I would get my time. And it was the kind of the opposite. Mm -hmm. I should have taken longer breaks, protected my core midline, and then I would have been better on the toes to bar. But mm -hmm. anyway, it's a long story to say that that's why you test these things and you don't compare yourself to everyone else in the room. You know, because it's it doesn't always hold up. And at the end of the day, maybe I do just need to get better at toaster bar, maybe, but I need to retest it to find out. You, you should know. you should take our uh the toaster bar transformed course. It's one of, <laughs> hey, one my of our one of our best courses way. here at Wad Prep. My toaster to to bar fine. I do them just fine, but it was a combination I'd never done before. That's yeah. the point, you know. Yep. And and it's really easy for me to like in this scenario, I was looking at James, my coach who does really good toast bar. And I feel like I do really good toast bar. And I looked at his time and what, well, hell he was 15 and a half minutes. That's probably where I'm going to come in. Mm -hmm. And when I finish the workout in 18 and a half, I have two choices. I can either be really depressed and feel like I'm out of shape or I can go, all right, I made a mistake. Now I'm going to correct it and go do it different next time and not worry about that comparison to him. You know, that's all. Cool. I like it. All right. I got another one. All right. Give it up. Panicking and practicing a skill right before the open workout is due. <laughs> Bar muscle ups. That For every me. freaking person that like, this is another reason why wad prep exists is like, there are so many people listening, watching just in the world that do CrossFit that, they love it. They go to the gym. They scale their workouts. They bail their workouts. They do like they do what they're supposed to do. But what they forget to do is practice skills throughout the year that 100% guaranteed will be showing up in the CrossFit Open. And then they freak out when the open programs double unders or the open programs chest of our pull ups or bar muscle ups. And they're like, oh my God, like, how do I do this? And it's like, did you not see this coming from a mile away? Like I understand wall walks the first year, but like it's very obvious the skills that are going to be involved in the open. So I don't understand why, whether it's beginner CrossFitters or even people have been doing the open for five, six years, they're still just like complete and utter panic when a, when something like double unders is programmed, it's like, there's no more obvious movement that will be programmed in every open from now until the history of opens is finished. And you're still going crazy because you don't know them yet. Like you have to spend the time in the off season or mid season, which is right now you have to spend the time developing, like adding in these skills to your normal, like metcons and, you know, go to class, do your thing, but you still need to be adding in these like little cherries on top to practice these skills so that when they come up in a true test, like in a competition, like the open, you're ready for them. You're not like, Oh my God. Like this is my one time a year to do bar muscle ups, <laughs> which I know you're laughing at. Right. Well, that's true. Th that happened to me, but I, I would put the asterisk. You only have to do that if you're going to 
decide to RX the open. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this is all predicated on people who want to do yeah. well in the open and are, they care about their score. If you're just doing it for totally for fun, then yeah, no worries. But the amount of people that panic that like really get stressed out about their open score yet, it's like, Hey, did you ever practice these? Oh no, I've never practiced these. And it's like, huh? Okay. Um, <laughs> did you think they were showing up this year? Right. Uh, I didn't think about it. You know. Well, so I would, um, I'm going to say the same thing, but only different, which is, it's the people who skip the skills practice. So yeah. it isn't, it isn't that they're panicking going into the open. It's that coach programs ring muscle ups. And instead of going in and doing your skills practice, you cherry pick. Oh yeah. Or like, yeah. you know, like I've so, so many, uh, gyms, like, which I love, they'll program like, all right, for the next 20 minutes, you get to practice a skill of your choice. And a lot of people just practice, um, Instagram and talking and that they, they practice the skill of talking to friends and right. being on Instagram and they're not using it like, like they would like, why do you have to have a three, two, one go to be completely focused and like, I got to get this done and I'm not going to talk and I'm going to focus on the workout. Like, why does you, why do you have to wait for three, two, one go in a Metcon to be that level of focus and intensity, which you should take that level of focus and intensity and apply it to things like skill practice. Yep. So, all right. I got, I have one. We have, what time is it? We still lay it on me. Yeah. Yeah. We got, we got lots of time. If anybody has questions, you guys can throw them in the chat. We're happy to discuss what you guys think the problems are. We've talked about this before. Um, I think it's people don't practice strict work. Mm. I think that's a huge mistake. New CrossFitters make, they immediately learn the kip. They don't practice strict pull-ups strict handstand push-ups um you know strict pulls on the rings yeah you know, strict presses <laughs> like there's so yep. many so many different strict movements you could do there's they're too busy going i'd rather do the push jerk because i can lift more weight that way instead of doing strict presses or right well i want to learn to do kipping handstand push-ups i remember Again, this is that piece of work, Regina. We had Scott Pancheck training. He was training for his first games. This was 2012. And he was training for regionals. He hadn't even made the games yet. Right. And he was training with Travis, which was Regina's husband. Travis went on to finish second at the games uh, in the Masters division a few years later. So he was Travis, really, what's his last name? Travis Page. Okay. Really, really fit dude. And uh, Travis and Scott would train together. And I'm watching them one day, and they're – literally doing strict handstand pushups, like huge rep schemes and running. But every time they'd come in and I remember Scott going, I really, I want to do kipping and Regina would not allow it under no circumstances. Would she allow kipping? They had to do strict. Now they mm -hmm. could, they both knew how to kip, but she wouldn't allow it. Well, Scott made regionals and the, if I'm remembering, I don't know if it's the first workout, but it was one of the first workouts. It was Diane which is 2159 deadlifts and handstand mm -hmm. pushups. And man, Scott could rep out some handstand pushups because he had not been kipping. He had been doing strict. And so when Dude, you know, I remember that regional, man, I remember that workout. Jeez. Dan Bailey's score was like 11 yes. seconds or something like that. Yeah, it was ridiculous. His range of motion is two and a half inches. Yeah. There, and there's still some debate over how good all those reps were. Oh, at, the at least judging my, back my friends. Was atrocious. There's videos and you're just like, what? Yeah. But you know, that aside, you know, it's that focus on strict. It makes a monster difference in, in what you can do in other movements. And I think that's mm -hmm. a big mistake people make. It's not focusing on that. Yeah. I like it. I like, so I, I like that. I think that's absolutely imperative. Um, and we see a lot of people who try to take our courses, um, they'll buy like our muscle up course or bar muscle up course or butterfly pull up course. And I'll be like, Hey, how many strict pull ups can you do? Uh, I don't know. One, two. And I'm like, you're not there yet. You got like the, the, the strict work is the, oh, let's do another analogy. So <laughs> doing a bunch of kipping is like building this beautiful mansion. That's like sexy. It's got all the bells and whistles on top of a, of a really, really weak foundation on just this, on a sand foundation that just is going to crumble. You got to make a really strong, sturdy foundation out of, out of reinforced concrete. And then you can build up that really big house on top of it. So you got to have that foundations. And I think that's what the strict work is. Dude, if my body is like a house, it's like a Scooby-Doo haunted mansion. I swear to God, it is beat up right now. So beat up right now. Scooby-Doo haunted mansion. It is. Just crumbling. 
I think I, the probably the last thing I would put on the list um, is trying to cram in too much in a week. I think particularly yeah. new CrossFitters, I think you kind of mentioned it earlier, like they're not making fast enough progress. And so what they do is they're like, all right, well, twice as much is better. Yeah, you know? more, more is not better. Yeah, I'll put, yeah, I think, I think that's a good one. Yeah, no, they'll come in and go, all right, well, if coach is programming five days a week, I'm going to go in on the, on the, two open gym days and I'm going to do ridiculous workouts and then I'm going to do two a days at home, you know, and you start throwing in all this other stuff. And then all of a sudden your body's just wrecked. Like, you know, I would do that early on. We would go out and do really intentionally stupid things. Intentionally stupid. No, no, it was like we, that was our claim to fame is like, we were like, all right, what dumb thing can we do this weekend? Well, one time we did 500 burpees for time at a track of all places. Like we terrible idea. Yeah, we wrote yoga mats and did 500 burpees for time. Or we would do, uh, have you ever done Clovis? It's terrible. I think I remember you you mentioned this before. Yeah, what is it? It's a 10 mile run and 150 burpee pull ups, broken yeah. up any way you want to break it up. Right. So we, we would do that, you know, or we do, we'd come in on a rest day and do Zeus, you know, which is a, again, and kind of another ridiculous hero wide. And, and, you know, this is what we were doing for fun. You know, and I had no business doing that stuff early on. We were doing Holly Man, 30 rounds with heavy cleans and handstand push-ups and wall balls. And it's like oh. I was in my second year of CrossFit. I couldn't do 10 straight pull-ups. What the hell am I out there doing Holly Man for? No. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was just dumb. And I think a lot of people do that. They just come in and they think, all right, well, more is better. I'll get more fit if I do this. And what they're really doing is, you know, driving up their risk of injury. Sure. Yeah. I mean, there's overtraining. Um, and that was something we mentioned in, on last week's podcast is that overtraining is a big reason why people stay plateaued is they, they think more is more. And honestly, there's a lot of times where less is more where coming in, working out really hard and then leaving yourself ample amount of time to recover, um, is a great way to see progress. Um, I love it. And then I have one more. Wait, here, here's then, one. Kristen oh, came in one mile lunges after working out. Been, I've done that too. That was oh one of the ones my on my God. list. Yeah, I've done that. Matter of fact, uh, Regina, <laughs> talking about her a lot tonight, I was on vacation once and I'm like, hey, I need some vacation workout. She goes, go do a mile of lunges. She, and she said it so offhandedly. I'm like, okay, well, that sounds like a nice little body weight workout. That won't be hard. So I did it the day I was driving to and from Mississippi, which is about a 12 hour drive, right? And so I do it the day before I'm going home. And the next day I get in the car, I can't walk. Like every time I'm getting out of the car, I'm like, hobbling like trying to get into the gas station so i can go to the bathroom like it was terrible absolutely. that sounds horrible oh it was, no. it was absolutely horrifying um all right so the 10th one and then i'll go through the list for a review we've we've done 10 different stupid dumb mistakes <laughs> crossfitters make this one is actually matt um mentioned it earlier and he said ignoring things outside of the box so diet sleep stress etc and i'm purely referring to myself so it, it, i think that's spot on is ignoring external factors, uh, ignoring recovery. Remember like a lot of us as CrossFitters, we think that in the gym, that's where we make progress. That's where we make gains. That's how we get better. That's how we do CrossFit. CrossFit it's all about in the box as much time as possible. When really, as I've mentioned several times, the, the place that you get fitter is outside of the gym. You get less fit in the gym because you break down your muscle fibers. You're, you're literally tearing yourself down. And then you leave time for recovery outside of the gym. And that's when your body builds back stronger for the next time for you to go in and work out. So um, I think that's a really, really strong one, like ignoring sleep, ignoring uh, proper nutrition, ignoring uh, stress. If you ignore those main three things like, you know, sleep, nutrition, uh, managing stress in your life, you could have everything else dialed in and your, your training is still going to potentially suffer big time. So you need to make sure that your external factors are fully optimized, which is a perfect plug for recovery RX. <laughs> um, but yeah, you just, you have to focus on recovery and managing those external factors so that you can maximize your time inside the gym. And it looks like we might have lost John. Oh, he's back. I'm back. I'm back. We swap sides. Somehow. We swap sides. Um, yeah. Anything on that? Uh, ignoring recovery outside the gym? Um, no, I think it's spot on. I mean, I do that now. That's the thing. Like, I, I don't think that's just a new CrossFitter problem. I think that's, oh, yeah, yeah. that's, you know, kind of a problem across the board that we forget how important it is. Like I'm, 
I think I mentioned maybe last week, I'm starting, I started my training for the gauntlet in Wadapalooza. And I know that's going to be a really hard workout. So I did, I, I'm kind of approaching it um, in a, a two or three step plan. One is get better rest, make sure I'm getting plenty of sleep. I'm taking third Z, by the way, which is on the screen. We talk about them all the time, but like, you know, I want to make sure I get good quality sleep at night. So I'm cutting way back on alcohol, uh, not alcohol with well, that too, but way back on caffeine uh, after 12 PM. So I'm not really having mm -hmm. caffeine in the afternoons anymore, taking third Z before I go to bed and trying to get better sleep. So that's kind of step one. Uh, step two is I'm working with a nutritionist now to dial in my nutrition for the next four months, which includes little to no alcohol, which sucks, but whatever. Got to be fit, right? And then the third one is I'm, you know, tweaking my, I'm kind of practicing what I preach here and taking the workouts I get at uh, Crooked River CrossFit and I'm planning those out. So I look at what they do for the week. I'm going to do four of those a week and then I have two other workouts that I'm supplementing in. And so I've got to rotate that and plan it and to work into my CrossFit training. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So I'm not just going into it blind. Where are you thing. getting your other two workouts? Uh, well, the nutritionist that I'm working with owns a affiliate here in town. And so I'm training with them one day a week. We're doing cool. kind of a long, a Sunday. Um, I did one yesterday. It took us 48 minutes. It was a, kind of a, a, a smash up session. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it'll be, you know, kind of like a simulation of what, uh, the gauntlet is. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 You Sweet. know, I mean, that's a 50 minute workout. And so, you know, it'll be a lot of that. Um, mm -hmm. a lot of couplets and triplets and, but you know, very little breaks in between and just long, you yeah. know, uh, and training with people fitter than me, which is most important. Yeah. They're, that, they're, they're all fitter than me. Um, matter of fact, I, my, my training partner for that day just destroyed me. Like he's a great rower and this thing had, uh, 5,000 meters worth of rowing in it, like spread out over the workout. And so he's out here pulling, you know, minute 35, 500 meters. Yeah. Like it's like, it's nothing like literally just like, that's his pace. That's, That's his crazy. pace. You know, <laughs> my pace is like minute 48, maybe minute 50 if I'm really, you know. Oh, yeah. Mine's minute 55, baby. I take my time on the rower. I like to soak it in, you know. Dude, he was he was absolutely destroying it. And so by the end, like, I'm just praying for death. But my point is, is like I'm going in with a plan and, you know, making sure that I'm kind of following these two or three steps that you mentioned. Because I, I do think – um you know, diet and sleep are as important as the training plan, which is why I led with those two before kind of tweaking my training plan. I mean, if I had to choose between the three, I just go to CrossFit five days a week and not worry about the gauntlet and just go, well, I'll be fit enough as long as I get good sleep and my diet's good. Yeah, very true. You know, very true, especially because you have those baseline, you know, skills. Yeah. Um, love it. So I'll go through the, go through the list of 10 here. Um, and We'll start with the, well, I'll try to do them in order. Um, yeah. So the first one was, I need to get stronger when in fact, no, you just need to really focus on technique. Um, wearing bludge, bl bludge, wearing blood, bloody hands, bloody knees as a badge of honor. Bludge, uh, no bludging. No bludging. Um, three is I'm missing gear and I need to buy more of it. Four is I've stopped making progress this week. I need a tougher program. I need to be, I need to follow a competitor program. Uh, number five is lacking clear goals. Number six, which I wrote somewhere. Ah, comparison to others. I think that's a huge one is yeah. always comparison. You're comparing yourself to other. Um, seven was kind of this, this idea of more is better. Um, and I think I messed up the order. Eight is no strict work at all. And then nine, I guess there was only nine. I definitely wrote these wrong. Nine was ignoring external factors like recovery. So it seems like we had nine things or there was 10 and it's lost somewhere in my random scribbling. Of notes. Number 10 will be take better notes. How take better, that? take notes in order in <laughs> which they show up. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, I think that's a great list. And if, I mean, Listeners, if you just supply one or two of these, that's it's gonna it's gonna make a really big difference. Uh, if you you know it basically change these ten bad things or nine bad habits, change one or two of them, and it's gonna move you in the right direction. Um, 
And yeah. It's funny. We look at all these superhuman crossfitters and think, oh, I can never be like Rich Froning or Matt Frazier or Tia Claire Toomey. And the reality is, is like the things that are on this list, they fixed a long time ago. Yep. And continue to fix. Like, you know, we talk about Frazier all the time, put such a high premium on sleep. Like he was just crazy about it. Like absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I think he still is to some degree, you know? Oh, I mean, sleep doesn't matter if you're trying to be a really good CrossFitter, or just trying to live a happier, healthier life with, you know, better mental clarity and a higher mental, you know, capacity. Like sleep is the healthiest thing that you can pretty much do on earth. Um, so I, I get it kind of angry at like the, the hustle culture of like, I wake up at 3 15 AM, you know, cause I'm a beast. And it's like, no, you're an idiot. Like, right. Great. If you wake up that early, I sure hope you're going to bed super early, but honestly, all you're doing is you're setting yourself up for like Alzheimer's. <laughs> like yeah. you're really well, just, like, it's not that cool. <laughs> I just think these guys have figured out, you know, these elite athletes have started to figure out the things that we're mentioning here and they just don't make those mistakes and it, and it allows them time to focus on, you know, kind of all that other stuff, you know, whereas, you know, we're all out here trying to figure out how can I lift more? And, you know, we're going to bed at two in the morning. Yeah. Know? We're scrolling <laughs> Instagram till one thirty AM or like me last night shopping for truck accessories, because obviously I need to be better at off-roading right. and staying up till about 1 AM and then realizing, Oh shoot, I probably shouldn't work out at six 30 in the morning because hashtag sleep. That's an example of just me being an idiot. Oh. Yes, I did sleep, but also I should have still worked out this morning if I wasn't right. such a moron the night before. So it's hey, all truck accessories are important, Ben. They're very important. <laughs> it is. Got to get a big pair of truck nuts. It'll be perfect. I think, yeah, I was thinking, I just can't figure out if I'm going to do slight with the right down or the left down, which, you know, I'll, I don't know. I'll, which, send, you, which I'll send you a pair. I'll send you a pair. It'll <laughs> be good. It'll be, be my gift to you. Thank you. All right, dude. Well, this has been fun as always. Appreciate everyone uh, tuning in tonight with a big crowd. So this was fun. Lots of uh, yeah. a lot of people in the chat. So. Thanks for the comments, everyone. Uh, we see all of them and appreciate the feedback. Again, if you have not done it yet, please subscribe on your favorite podcast platform to Scale and Bail. And please leave us a five-star review. It really helps. Anytime someone subscribes, anytime someone uh, leaves a five-star review or, or engages in some way, shape, or form, that really helps the podcast grow. And we're trying to to help beginner CrossFitters or old CrossFitters or everyone in between. So we're, yeah. we're trying to help everybody here. Yeah, feel free to send us DMs and uh, let us know topics you want us to cover and we'll be happy to do it. So And also, if you live in Colorado and you know where there are a bunch of elk, <laughs> I will use this podcast platform. Please tell me where the elk are in Colorado. That is way more important than leaving a five-star review. <laughs> If you want to absolutely sure that make sure that elk stay safe, tell Ben where they are because I will not be hitting them. <laughs> it's probably any stretch of imagination. But I'll That'll be back. Be I'll be I'll be still in town for next week, and then next week will be my last one for the foreseeable future as I go gallivant in the woods for potentially an entire month. Gallivanting, I love it. All right, it's been fun, dude. For everyone listening, appreciate you guys joining, and we will chat with you guys next week.